Now, there are few brands that rival the historical importance of Vacheron Constantin, with the brand having uninterrupted operations since the year 1755. Yet amongst its busy collection of notable classics, one purest creation that lives rent-free in the hearts of fans of the brand is their Corn de Vache 1955. And in this video, we'll take a closer look at this pink gold version. Now, if you want to expand your knowledge on watches, a great place to do that is of course watching the content here. But if you want even further knowledge, I'd recommend checking out our new collection of books on teddybaldesser.com. This was a hand curated collection by myself. I wanted to try to put together, you know, a couple dozen great books and things that you can you know either throw on a coffee table, you know, read before, you know, bed at night and just expand your horological knowledge. We have a wide array of different topics of books that you can take a look at. I'll have a link to that down in the description below. Vacheron is a brand that certainly loves to pay tribute to their past, hence why they have a collection comprising some of their most storied designs known as their Historique Collection. Now this part of their catalog contains fan favorites like the Driving Model American 1921, which I've covered on this channel in the past, the 1942 Triple Calendar, and the recent revival that we saw last year with the 222. Representing the chronograph within this elite company is a model that looks back to the 1950s, known as the Corn de Vache 1955. Now during this period of time during the 20th century, Vacheron was busy celebrating their bicentennial, and to mark the occasion, they unveiled a new chronograph reference the 6087, which was one of their first waterproof and magnetism protected chronographs to be serialized by the brand. This name Corn de Vache translates from French to English as cow horns. Without further context, it is a peculiar head scratcher of a name, yet it describes the key characteristic of the watch's silhouette its lug shape. This lug style of the 6087 became emblematic of the period and is one of the most crucial pillars among Vacheron collectors, partially because of its design, but also its rarity. According to Vacheron, they said, quote, as far as we know, only 36 pieces were made between 1954 and the middle of the 1960s in pink and yellow gold. Now this model remained dormant for decades, adding to its legend with each passing year until 2015, where Vacheron decided to reignite the flame with the unveiling of the contemporary Corn de Vache, which heavily showed reverence to the past while delivering on contemporary refinements where seen necessary. The collection has expanded to include some different case materials, but today we look at one that looks as if it was pulled straight from the era it aims to emulate. So now let's take a closer look at this piece with its case, dial, and movement. And at the end, I'm gonna conclude with some of my closing thoughts on this watch. The case of the Corn de Vache measures at 38.5 millimeters in diameter, 10.9 millimeters in thickness, and a lug to lug of 47.5 four millimeters. The central case and thickness are of ordinary form one would expect from a watch based on a 1950s uh, level of watchmaking. Yet with the unorthodox lug design, it does cause the watch to wear slightly larger, closer to that of a 39 millimeter, yet it is assisted greatly by the position of the lug holes being seated higher than normal to allow the strap to sit nice on the wrist. In my opinion, this piece is simply phenomenal on wrist, offering enough presence for those that have a slightly above average wrist, but also really working with anybody below that size as well. Well. The solid pink gold case is polished on every visible outer surface, including the curvaceous welded lugs, pump pushers, and the crown nestled between three. The strap coming with this is a thick, genuine alligator, which also has another underside lining with another layer of alligator, topped off with a gold Maltese cross buckle, that in addition to looking the part is actually easy to unfasten as the top of the Maltese cross will allow you to get a finger underneath it with ease without really damaging the strap. Now the dial seen through the sapphire crystal is as pure as they come, offering a bi-compact layout with registers at three, which indicates 30 minutes, and nine, which showcases the running 60 seconds. The dial's periphery has a tachometer scale seated just outside the minute track with raised applied gold numerals that match the gold hands at center and on the nine o'clock register. The center chronograph hand and the 30 minute counter have a blue steel hand format and both jumping into action with the activation of the manual wound VC caliber on the inside, the 1142 available
available through its Exhibition Sapphire case back. Now this movement is based on the story architecture of the legendary Lamania 2310, a base caliber that has found its way in some of the most iconic chronographs of the 20th century. However, this movement is produced and decorated in-house by Vacheron Constantin in Geneva, while upholding the stringent finishing requirements of a Geneva seal movement. The 1142 employs the classic action of a horizontal clutch and column wheel, in this instance capped with the brand's signature of a Maltese cross, in case you were having trouble locating that column wheel. And the manual wound caliber offers a clear view of nearly every component, with the chronograph center wheel being on perfect display, making it easy to recognize when the coupling clutch falls into place when activating the chronograph, while also showcasing the snappy movement of the hammers when the chronograph is reset. The balance is of a free sprung architecture differing from the base with an overcoil hairspring and is fine tuned adjusted by way of tiny screws on the balance wheel. Finishing is exceptional as expected with every exposed bridge displaying mirroring anglage on their edges and a Cote de Genève finish on their tops with black polished screws and beveling on their sinks with micro perlage on the exposed area of the base plate beneath the balance. When fully hand wound, the watch has a not so lengthy 46 hour power reserve and does not feature hacking, but beats away at three Hertz, 21,600 vibrations per hour while being adjusted at five different positions for upholding accuracy. But now to unpack, taking a look at this Vacheron piece. So I am a huge lover of classic Vacheron Constantin. There's nothing truly hype about this brand unless you're looking at the overseas, which really was not a byproduct of their own doing. It was more of the doing of some of the other high horology brands and more people waking up to what Vacheron was delivering. But if you look at something like this within the history collection, this or the 1921, I think you get a big idea of the essence of what Vacheron is all about. This is a watch that has this purest type of mentality, uh, but not in a way that it comes off as condescending or you know elitist in any way. I think there's nothing about this watch that screams out at you trying to grab attention. It's just this beautiful silhouette with that cow horn design. The dial is simply beautiful. I love the history of this piece in connection to that cool nickname, the wear Durability, also phenomenal. It's not too small, but also not too large. It's right into where it needs to be. Uh, the stainless steel option also offers it up in a pretty unique price range uh, for where at least you're talking about. Now, that's really where we're getting into where this gets, I think, a little absurd is because these watches are expensive. And when looking at the price range and looking at the movement, you do have to just take a look at what else is out there. And I would say the number one thing that's going to be competitor to this piece, not because of the look standpoint, but just because if you're talking about a high horology chronograph, what is available to you in this price range, you're talking about something like the Longa 1815 chronograph, which has the L951, which is one of the best finished chronograph movements in the world. This is of course is a well done, exceptional movement as well, but with this in precious metal, you're talking about just under $60,000. It's beautiful, but is it that $60,000 beautiful considering that there are maybe some other competition now in this segment? But all things considered, I do believe this is one of the most beautiful, just traditional horizontal layout chronographs that you're going to find from a high horology perspective. The silhouette is recognizable. It wears like a dream. And as Patek has started to now move in and shift their focus, it now leaves more of an open playing field for other brands that are going to lean into this classic chronograph design. And I think Vacheron is among the best at doing it with excellence. But all right, everybody, that is my take looking at this Vacheron Corn de Vache. What do you think of this watch? Uh, do you like it? Do you not like it? Uh, would you like to see more Vacheron on this channel as well? What else would you like to see us cover in this price range? Uh, this is a watch that's long been on my list. I think it's one that is one of the most beautiful watches that Vacheron makes. Absolutely adore the design of this piece, uh, but it is certainly asking a big chunk of change, but that's the cost of beauty, I suppose. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, hit the bell icon. Also check out teddybaldasar.com, full authorized dealer of 30 brands, quick and fast fulfillment, dedicated customer support, and a full factory warranty for all the products that we offer. How we're able to produce the content on this channel is through selling watches on our site. Brands don't pay us money to feature products on this channel. So if you wanna support the content, of course, continue to watch, give us a good subscribe. But also in addition to that, if you are in the market for a watch, we'd love to have your business. I know you can buy a watch anywhere, but it really helps us. And uh, we'd love to, of course, uh, be able to help you with your next watch purchase. But guys, thank you again so much for watching. Be well, and I'll see you all very soon.